So music is definitely one of the themes of The Song Collector. When I moved house shortly after my son was born, we moved into a thatch cottage in the middle of nowhere and I discovered that a local musician had actually developed a one-man show around the 18th century folk song collector, singer, songwriter and mischief maker called Benjamin Rose and he'd been touring for, for years with this show which was actually set in our living room and I was intrigued and wanted to know more about Benjamin Rose and I tracked down Tim Laycock, the musician, at Max Gate, Thomas Hardy's house in Dorset and he told me a little bit more about Benjamin Rose and how he discovered a manuscript book dating from the 18th century and he showed me the book and I had a look through and I had that tingle that somehow if I was going to be writing in this house that somehow music had to find its way into the story and as I sort of delved I loved the idea that every place has its own piece of music every village has its song every stream and the sort of the the story of England is really told in song and I was fascinated by this sort of connection between music and landscape and I know that sort of the, the great composers, whether it's sort of Sibelius, you have these sort of wonderful symphonic works which sort of evoke landscape but I wanted to sort of see whether there was sort of a more ephemeral connection between sort of folk song and old song and, and landscape. And as I was intrigued by this, I realised that um, my main character in the novel, um, Fox, was obsessed by this and really needed to know. And that the source of his creativity really very much comes from the landscape. So the kind of composer that he is, is he sort of listens to, to the music of, sort of local places and then he takes this and this music weaves its way into his own work. And when he's at a distance or shut off from the landscape in some way, he's completely blocked and totally unable to write.